Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Worship with St. Andrew Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Jenna, and I am so happy that you are joining us this morning. Whether you are with us live on this snowy Sunday morning, or whether you are um, joining us in worship at a later time, we are so glad that you are here. Uh, you may have noticed that our background looks a little bit different than my usual one. Um, this is where it's kind of awesome that we have this technology. Um, my driveway and street weren't shoveled this morning, weren't cleared out. Um, and so, but we're still able to gather for worship. Um, so I'm deeply grateful for this flexibility that also keeps us all safe, um, safe in different ways today. Um, this also means that while in years past, we would have to cancel the annual meeting due to a snowstorm, uh, we won't be canceling it this year. So our worship link that we have up now, um, this is the this service will segue into the annual meeting. So you do not have to leave this webinar. You don't have to go look for another link. You don't have to do anything. Just leave this up. Um, we, we hope you're joining us for the meeting, but, um, and so if you are, please just leave this up and um, we will transition it into the annual meeting, um, which um, we, I, I'm, I, am, I am hopeful that our annual meeting will be full of good dreams and ideas and love and compassion. Um, we have a congregation that deeply loves um, the whole church, and um, I am I'm grateful for the commitment to the care and well-being of our congregation. Um, so we will we will be doing that. Um, we are also continuing to look for some folks who would like to share their creativity on Sunday morning. Um, as you will notice throughout the service, there is what we call the placeholder image, and that is the image that is shared um, in, in lieu of uh, one of one of us, myself, or our, our assisting minister, or reader, um, other um, our ch our children's message this morning. Um, we have an image placeholder. And right now, um, uh, Bill List and, and the List family have been really creative in coming up with ideas. And we wanna share, we wanna, we would like for you to share your ideas um, with the community on Sunday mornings. So if you have an idea for just us, it's a still image. It doesn't even have to be anything uh, terribly complicated. Um, but if you would like to take a crack at that, please reach out to us, um, myself and Bill and Steve, and we will uh, coordinate what the readings are and help to come up with a, an image that could fit into that mix. Um, Lots of ways for folks to be involved. Uh, this could be a great, a great thing for um, families to do, for our, for our kiddos to come up with an image to share on Sunday mornings, um, and we hope that you will, you will help us out with that, please. Um, I unfortunately um, have a bit of uh, very sad, unexpected news for us this morning. Um, Bill Turner passed away quite unexpectedly on Friday. Um, and I know that a number of you are already aware of this, but um, the, there, there, are, there are details that are available. I'm not going to share it here because this gets you know, put up on the internet. But um, right now we're, you know, we continue to hold um, Bill's wife, Lori, and their son, Matt, um, and, and his family in our prayers. Um, it, like I said, it was very sudden. Um, so that creates different layers of grief and complications in all of this. Um, there is no information at this time about a service, um, but I will be working with the family uh, to do for us to do a service in the next uh, month or so. Prob um, we're looking at dates in the next month or so, um, and the service will be done um, primarily via Zoom. Um, and so um, that that is 
you know, with the, the, the family is actually grateful for that because a lot of folks can't travel in for a service anyways. Um, and this will still allow fam loved ones to gather. Um, so please be on the lookout for that, um, for that information um, so that when the time comes, we hope that you will join us as we remember and give thanks for um, the, the quiet but extraordinary life of Bill Turner. Um, and we'll take a moment of silence now as we remember him and give thanks before we continue. Thank you. With that, we turn our hearts and our minds to God as we begin with our call to worship. God comes into a world filled with uncertainties and darkness. God seeks out the voids of belief and conviction. God embraces the wounded and broken. God knocks down the walls of division and strife. God is the candle shining in the darkness of our days. God is the God light of the God is the one who makes all things new. Praise be to God now and forevermore. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. We'll take a moment of silence before we continue. Holy God, you search us and know us. You're acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your son jesus christ our savior and lord amen
morning, boys and girls. My name is Miss Sonia, and Pastor Jenna has asked me to give you the children's message today. So I am so glad to be with you. This morning, I'd like to tell you a story. And then I'd like to talk about our psalm reading that Miss Teresa is going to read in a little bit. Now, my story is about me. When I was about 13 years old, I went with my family on vacation to Georgia. And while we were on vacation, we decided to go to church. Well, when we were in church, the door opened and you'll never believe who walked through the door. It was the president of the United States. Um, his name was President Carter at that time. And everybody was just, oh, wow, it's the president right here with us. We were kind of awestruck and thinking about what a powerful person he was. And he was right here with us. Everybody was kind of like, oh, wow, I'm going to be good in church today. Well, after church, when the president left, my dad said, or before the president left, my dad said, I'm going to go shake his hand. And I thought, wow, that's pretty brave. But if my dad's going to do it, I'm going to do it too. So we went over and President Carter was walking out of the church, shaking lots of people's hands. And he shook my dad's hand and he shook my hand. And when he shook my hand, he looked right into my eyes and he smiled. And I thought, wow, he's really a kind man. He's powerful, but he's really kind. That is a time I will never forget. Well, what does that have to do with our Bible reading today? You know, in lots of places in the Bible, it says the Bible says we should fear God. We should fear God. But I don't think that means that we need to be afraid of him. When Miss Teresa reads our Psalm today, there are some big words in there that I want you to listen for, big words that describe God. There are words like majesty and splendor, wonders, holy, awesome. Those are big words that make us remember how awesome God is and they fill our hearts with respect for him because he's so big and powerful and majestic and splendorous and wonderful. But you know, there are other words in that psalm that tell us a little bit more about God. And these are words like gracious and compassion, truth and faithfulness. Those are good words for a good God that make us feel warm and happy and let us know how kind he is. Now, if you listen to Miss Teresa read our psalm today, one of the last things she's gonna read is this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Now we know now, don't we, that that means we don't need to be afraid of God, but we can recognize God and show him respect, recognize how awesome he is. And that is the beginning of wisdom, living the right way and living the way God wants us to. So whenever you hear for the fear of the Lord, remember you don't need to be afraid of God, but we recognize his awesome power and we respect him. Okay, let's do the prayer and I'll do the prayer the same way that Pastor Jenna does. I'll say something and you can repeat after me. Dear God, you are awesome. You are kind. Help us to always remember you and respect you. Help us to live the way you want us to. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. And now Miss Teresa is going to read that psalm. So listen to her words. A reading from Miss Teresa. Today, our reading comes from Psalm 111. 
Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart and the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your words, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. Your cause, your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand for fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have good understanding. God's praise endures forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching. For they taught them as one having authority, not as one of the scribes. Just then there was a, just there was in their synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. Everyone gathered was all amazed and they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> Beloveds, grace and peace to you in the name of the God revealed in Christ. Amen. So I have to be honest, the thought of someone shouting at me during a sermon is definitely the stuff of a pastor's stress dreams. And guess what? It happened my very first Sunday in my last ministry setting. Now, I should probably explain that the person yelling at me had rather severe dementia and she had been really close to the previous chaplain. So my appearance on Sunday morning was quite unwelcome to her. Now, fortunately, Working in memory care settings means that you really learn to embrace the yes and lessons of improv. And you just go with it. When I was first reading the story of Jesus to prepare for Sunday this week, and reading of him being harassed by a power bent on making him run away, I really appreciate that Jesus leaned into the yes and. Now, even though he calls out the possessing spirit, he doesn't demonize the man. He is focused on this other entity. Now, I have no idea what the spirit is in our gospel encounter today, this unclean spirit. There are a number of valid, thoughtful arguments for what the spirit could mean. Um, some argue that whenever we encounter unclean spirits in scripture, that was the ancient stand-in for 
um, for severe illnesses such as epilepsy, epilepsy or our mental health illnesses, um, or it could be a representation of anything that possesses us, right? Greed, hatred, jealousy, love of power and privilege and money, right? Anything that serves our interests over that of our larger community. These are all valid arguments. And even further, there's the actual argument that spiritual possession was and is referencing actual demonic possession, right? We have a whole range of things to deal, uh, to, to choose from. Now, I want to be clear first, even though this is a bit of an, a non sequitur, is that this isn't meant to equate our health conditions, whether they be physical or mental, with evil spirits. In the ancient world, there just wasn't the same understanding of the human body that we have now. And there are a lot of instances in ancient writings where the situation reference could very well be a physical or mental illness that was being dealt with. We just, we do not know, and we can make some guesses and based off of some very good evidence, but ultimately we do not know. So I just wanna make that, that clear first. But when it comes down to it, I'm not sure it matters if we know exactly what the malevolent spirit represents. What matters is God's action in the midst of pain and suffering. What matters is that Jesus sees the person, the individual, and restores him to wholeness, restores him to his community. Jesus sees him and says, yes, and. Jesus sees this unnamed man who had been ravaged by the spirit possessing him. The spirit possessed his ability to speak and to move on his own. It had isolated him from his community. It had destroyed his relationships with others. He had no dignity because the spirit had dehumanized him. The joyous shock ripples across the community of faith gathered that day. Who is this Jesus who speaks with such authority? Even our scribes don't act like that. It can be really easy to, to hear this as a criticism of the, the scribes and to shame them. And in turn, a lot of times in our modern contexts, we very unintentionally shame Judaism here. But the scribes were doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing, what had been entrusted to them. They were handing down the traditions and teachings that had been handed down for generations. This handing down of traditions and teachings was important, essential work. Keep in mind that the people of Israel for millennia, more or less at this point, had regularly been conquered and occupied, sent into exile, forbidden from properly worshiping God, and generally being treated abominably. To be able to hand things down generation to generation, that meant that people survived and thrived well enough for this to happen. But Jesus threatens this not so stable stability. He threatened the somewhat relative peace and stability that Israel had obtained, even if they were under foreign occupation. Remember, uh, Rome was the ruling power. But they were allowed to worship at the temple in Jerusalem, and they could gather in their synagogues, and no one was persecuting them, so could things please just stay that way? Keep things normal, the usual, nothing new, please. Thank you very much. And yet, Jesus re leans into this proclamation that our psalmist set up this morning, um, that Miss Sonia and Miss Teresa helped to set up too. 
as the author of Psalm 111 points us to, God is so, so much bigger and greater and more wonderful than what we can ever expect. Now, keep in mind, the Psalms are divided into five sections, more or less, less like five collections within the larger collection. And Psalm 111 is a part of the fifth book. These were the Psalms written in anticipation of the Israelite exile ending and then being able to return to Jerusalem. Now, I've referenced the Israelite exile rather a lot, given my relatively short tenure with St. Andrew. Our COVID situation isn't the same as being ethnically and religiously targeted, so the comparison has to end somewhere. But what I am comparing is that sense of longing for home, a longing to return to the way things were to go back to some sense of normalcy. And yet, what the Israelite community in exile anticipated wasn't a return to normal. Writings from this time show us that they didn't know what their return would look like, but that the uncertainty wasn't an indication of God's abandonment. Rather, the return was a sign of God's presence, of God being at work in a big, big way. This asks the question then, if the act of redemption was an act of divine grace, the response to that grace is surely faithfulness, right? The psalmist and the congregation gathered that Sabbath day, both show the response to God's majesty and power. A response of fear and awe. Now, Miss Sonia set this up wonderfully. That fear is not a, uh, a, re a response of being afraid, right? God isn't terrorizing us, but it's, you know, it's not that sort of fear that possessed the man, right? The, the man with the unclean spirit. Rather, it's a fear that reveres. Those who revere God live in a larger world because they allow themselves to be open to something greater, something better that lies deeply within even the most ordinary experiences. The people who had come to worship on the day Jesus was preaching and teaching had left themselves open to that something greater, that something better. They hadn't gone looking for greener grass, but rather had been open to how God might show up and be at work in their lives wherever they were. I really love this. I love that God shows us the way even the way to be surprised, to be amazed, to be overwhelmed by God's power and might. Now, in many ways, I'm sure that the last thing that we want, given the nature of this last year, is more surprise. The joy of surprise doesn't really, uh, isn't really there. The last thing we want is something greater or something better. We just want to return to what was. But as our scripture shows us this morning, God invites us to set that aside. To set that aside and to embrace the greatness and awesomeness and the bigness of all God has to offer us. God invites us into a future that is unknown and yet is already settled for us. Because God has already said yes and to us. God has already made us her beloved children and has said 
you are mine. There is nothing this world can throw at you. There is no amount of, of tragedy or, or true terrorizing fear that can overcome my love and my awesomeness. Use that word a lot. I like that word awesomeness. But with God, it is a sense of almost speechlessness in his grandeur and his wonderfulness. God invites us to be open to that something greater, that something better, not, not a greener grass situation, but what God has in store for us, what God is at work doing, what God has already prepared and wants to lead us to. God invites us into that. God sees us, heals us, loves us, says yes and to us. How are we saying yes and in return? Amen. Thanks be to God. by Christ made, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay readers, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For all God's works in creation, 
plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid, aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in need, especially Pastor Steve Swanson, and Ruth Duran, for caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, and for others in other needs in our community, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, we remember the life and ministry of Bill Turner, who suddenly passed away this week. We hold his wife, Lori, their son and grandchild, and all who knew him and loved him in our prayers as they make space for their grief. In thanksgiving for all who have died in the Lord, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Dear ones, I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. Uh, we got our great chat feature to do so this morning. Just a reminder that the chat automatically uh, only selects the panelists. So to send it to um, everyone this morning, uh, use your drop down menu to select uh, panelists and attendees, and then I'll go to everyone. Um, you can share it via text, Facebook message, send a quick email. Um, later today, make a phone call, uh, write a couple of notes, uh, reach out to reach out to folks in our community, um, in your faith community, and in our St. Andrew faith community, as we share that peace of Christ with one another. As we are uh, using our chat feature this morning, I like it. I can see little little comments pop up as y'all do it. It just it, it gives me joy. Um, as we do that, I'm going to move on to um, our offering this morning. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the ways that you give, um, for all the ways in which you give faithfully of your treasure, um, and all the ways in which you give of your time and your talents. Um, it takes all of it, and um, I, am, I am honored to be the pastor of this community and to know how generous and faithful you all are. Um, if you are not already giving to the community and you'd like to do that, there are a few ways to do it. You can mail in your offerings, drop it off when the church is open. Usually that is Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 10 until 3, um, weeks like this last one. We had uh, nasty weather on Tuesday, so we sh switched things around a bit. Um, and of course, you can go online to standrewmundeline.com forward slash donation um, and use our online giving portal. I know um, I like I like the the automated aspect of it. Um, uh, it, it helps me because otherwise uh, I would. Uh, I'd lose my head if it weren't attached to my body. So having things done like that is pretty great. Um, 
And then also please fill out our time and talent survey where it's called the gifts and interests survey this year. Um, it's been going out in our midweek blast. Um, we'll keep sharing it for a while. Um, please, please take the time to fill that out. Um, I, we're already making use of it. So it is not a wasted effort, I assure you. Um, it, it helps us to know what your talents might be um, and to invite you to share them um, through some time as well. With that, for all the ways in which we give, let us pray. Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms open wide, nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and end, the giver of life. Blessed are you in the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, here is the body of Christ. Here is bread. Here is wine. Here is Christ. Come and be fed. <laughs> the body of Christ given for you.
the blood of Christ shed for you. We'll take a few moments of silence before we continue. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table, we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Just a quick reminder before we uh, receive our blessing um, that the webinar will stay up and we will um, be transitioning into our annual meeting. Um, I didn't say this earlier, but there's no coffee fellowship after this. Um, go ahead and bring your coffee with you and we'll have fellowship during the meeting, um, gathering together in that way. Um, there's also no KFC or H2H today, um, though. But please, we hope you will stay and join us um, as we do the important work of being the church. It means we've got to do things like annual meetings. So we hope that you will join us for that. And no matter where we go, no matter how far we might go from home, God always goes with us and before us and sends us with this blessing. God, the creator, sustain, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 